Knowing your customers is vital. Do you really know who they are, where they're coming from and what their needs are? Increasingly, consumers want to shop more locally, more frequently. This is something you should evaluate and understand in your own community to help maximise sales. What makes a good village shop is the convenience. Um, obviously, I, I live locally, so obviously I can come here. Local produce, uh, reasonably prices. You know, you're not going to compete with Tesco's, but at the same time, you've still got to, you know, balance it out a bit. But it has all the necessities that you need, like milk and bread and other little bits that you might just run out of. When I go into a village shop for the first time, I very often ask the proprietor one very simple question. Who are your customers? What sort of village is it? And the answer I very often get back is that it's a retirement village. It's mainly elderly people that come into the shop. You go away and you find that that village does actually have a much more average profile than you suspected. There's young and old, rich, poor, a mix of commuters and retired people. And this highlights a very important point. If you're only seeing elderly customers all day, you tend to forget that there are all sorts of other people in the village as well. That the commuters, that the younger people are also spending money. And really it's quite important to try and meet their needs. One way of doing this is to conduct market research, to actually reach out and ask the community what it wants from the shop. Although it can take time to find out the demographic information for your village, it can really help you understand who your customers are, or could be. Age, gender and socio-economic groupings are some of the key indicators for understanding your market. Statistical information provided by census data is available through the Office for National Statistics, the Rural Community Council, your local authority or parish plan. The information is probably easier than you think to find. You needn't analyse the data in great detail, but looking at data sets to understand local car ownership, how many residents are still economically active, or method of travel to work, for example, will give you pointers to who your potential customers are. This is vital information to help you deliver the right services and stock the right products. As part of the one-to-one -one advice offered through Store is the Core, Detailed demographic analysis is undertaken for shops and the results have been a real eye-opener for many retailers. We use the census information to give us an idea, of, obviously a breakdown of ages um, uh, of, the, of the population and uh, we use that information, although a lot of it we would guess ourselves living in the community for, for 17 years and, and knowing the community well but um, it's handy to have that confirmed by the, by the census and, and to be able to use that data in, in making some of our, our, you know, our business decisions. The way we helped Butley to engage with the community and look at what products and services they were offering um, was we produced um, a questionnaire with them. We used a template that's been successfully used in the past. It's quite short, it's just uh, 15 questions on two sides of A4. Paul printed them off and with the help of volunteers distributed them to every house in Butley. I think there were about 350 altogether. I think it wasn't major change that people were looking for. Uh, it was small things like could one offer a, a wider range of fruit and vegetables? Uh, would it be possible to do um, some more fresh meat? People would like those to come from local, local suppliers. I think it's worth doing on a repeat basis. I think you have to be careful not to do them too soon and too often. But we did ours um, 18 months ago, and I would have thought another 18 months, 24 months, it's worth going out and, and testing the village again. There are many techniques used to collect information and market research. To understand, for example, where your passing trade comes from, you could offer a prize draw competition, asking customers to fill in a card with their postcode, phone number and email or Twitter address. It's important you keep the information simple so as not to delay the customer for too long and timestamp the card as it's given back. After a set period, say one month, you could plot the customer's addresses against a map and see any patterns emerge of where the passing trade is coming from and going to at different times of the day. Are there any opportunities for you? Perhaps you're midway on a commute to an out-of-town industrial park and customers use you to grab their morning coffee. But are you open when they are on their way back? 
The collated information gives you the opportunity to canvas opinion, find out more information, or send marketing material. There is an opportunity to drill down and capture more detailed information and get qualitative feedback from customers and non-customers about your store, what you stock, and when you're open. Thank you. Goodbye. Something like parish planning, which is now known as community-led planning, um, is a very important way of finding out what the community wants as a whole. And Butley actually are in the process of doing a parish plan at the moment. So the same parishioners will have another questionnaire, which will hopefully reinforce what's already been told to Paul about um, the shop situation. The local shop, as a very important element and often the hub of the community, should be involved the, the whole way through. They can be a point in which uh, questionnaires are left or collected, but I think it's all about communication, about being involved as much as you possibly can. Having gathered the information, it's now down to how you use it. Are you stocking both what's right for your existing customers and the range to tempt those not using you? Is your pricing right? Perhaps you've identified that 30% of the working population are on a lower than average wage, or there is a higher than average number of unemployed. Perhaps then it's time to introduce that one pound range and increase the number of price marked value packs. The data and information will hopefully give you many opportunities, stock ranges to think about and services to offer. You won't be able to keep everything and satisfy all requests, but market research can be a useful tool. Don't underestimate the importance of passing trade. If your shop's on a main road, then it really is a no-brainer to have a coffee machine and a hot pie facility to meet the needs of passing van drivers and reps. Even in less busy locations, it can still be a good idea to understand who's passing your door. If your road leads down to the beach, for example, then buckets, spades, even wetsuits can be a really good idea. It doesn't even have to be a road. A lot of villages have footpaths and cycleways passing through them, bringing potential customers past your door. Not only will they want sandwiches, bottles of water and so on, you can even have the opportunity to sell puncture repair kits. One of the main issues a customer questionnaire typically throws up is around opening hours. As customers are using village shops much more as convenience stores, the issue of what the right opening hours inevitably opens up. Customers expect the shop to be open when they're in the village, and particularly if they're out at work all day, this can mean longer opening hours of an evening. This is what customers want, but of course this can impact quite considerably on the family life of the village shopkeeper. Early in the morning, they uh, come down from the newspaper, fresh bread, fresh milk. When we come home from work, it's normally about seven, half seven, and so when we want you know, our milk, or we've realised we've run out of milk at the last minute, and also in the mornings, on a Saturday morning. I don't use it first thing in the morning, but I sometimes do late at night, and it's, it's, it's great that he does keep these trading hours. When we bought the shop, the shop was open nine to five, Monday to Friday, half day Saturday, and didn't open on Sundays. And we just realised that we're a convenience store business and we've got to be open for the customer's convenience and not ours. So we, we did a fair amount of research as to what people wanted around here, what their, what their roads were like, how much passing trade we had. And we just realised that we needed to be open early and we needed to be open late. So we decided to open from seven in the morning until eight at night, seven days a week. But the people we brought the shop from said, no point opening late at night, there's no one here. Well, the reality was there was no one here because they weren't open. And what we find now is we actually take more money, serve more customers between five and eight than we do between one and three. So far, we have found out who your customers are, what they need, and potentially taken action to attract new customers. The next step is to keep them. Typically, customer service is an area that village shops do very well. In fact, it's where you go the extra mile and preserve a lot of your custom, and it's important to maintain this. You want to walk in there and see a smile, don't you, every morning? Good service. It's important. Very important, yes. It's a lovely place to come and everybody's happy and smiling and friendly and 
It's a good centre to the village. Great customer service and going the extra mile is what can make or break a village shop as you are so embedded in village life. Consumers love that bit of personal service that only small shops can truly provide. It's imperative that both you and your staff are delivering the highest level of customer service. It's your chance to outshine the larger multiple retailers and supermarkets. All village shops aim to provide good customer service. They provide basic things such as selling local raffle tickets and providing prizes for local organisations. However, there are other very simple things that they can do to make their customers appreciate them more. Basic thing, providing a hook to which to tie dogs outside can make life much easier for customers. Another simple idea, providing a chair can enable elderly and infirm customers to come shopping independently. Some shops are providing a book exchange whereby customers can bring their own books in, exchange them for something they've not yet read and make a small donation to charity along the way. It brings in customers and at the same time provides a useful service to the village. When we first moved here we had a load of books in, in boxes and we put them out and we said 30 pence each book and the plan is people come in, they buy books um, and all the money raised goes to a different community group. And what we find from that is that people do just come in to buy their books, but they also have a look around. We've raised um, £5,000 so far, and that's, uh, I think I worked it out, something like 17,000 books have gone through the corner since we started. Presenting a good image in store is one thing, but it doesn't stop there. Presenting a professional and positive look through advertisements and promotion, both locally and online, is also important. Many retailers we work with don't seem to do much promotion and advertising. It's simply because they think they're at the heart of the community and they don't need to. Everybody knows where they are. But it can be really important to advertise and do promotion. If Coca-Cola didn't advertise, they would lose their market share. And to some degree it can be similar for village shops. Newsletters can be a really good way of promoting your store. It gives that personal edge. Often people get lots of glossy leaflets through their doors and they just end up in the bin. But if you can personalise a newsletter and tell stories about your store, it can really help. We looked at several ways of marketing the shop. We looked at advertising in local newspapers. But what we found the most successful was producing our own newsletter. The reason being that it was very personal to us. We initially wrote a newsletter once every four weeks, but what we found there was it was becoming a little bit bland we didn't always have new products to promote or interesting things to tell people. So what we decided to do was, was to run them quarterly. Feedback's always, always very positive. And we do see, we, we occasionally run like money off vouchers or special things so that we can actually quantify how successful the newsletter is. We live in a world of global communication and, at the touch of a button, customers can find out all about your store. It's potentially just as likely for a neighbour to be checking out your opening hours as it is an overseas visitor who is booked into a local B&B. They could be checking you out as a place to buy their lunch. It's important to have a presence online, whether this is through a website, social media page or a link from another website. The likes of Twitter and Facebook are absolutely essential because I think they can be amazingly empowering for small businesses. I mean, somewhere like Ludwell Stores, for example, not only has its own website, but it has a Twitter feed. They can communicate with their customers in a way that you wouldn't otherwise be able to. So unlike just pure advertising, which is a one-way street, it's a two-way street because people can respond, they can react, and they can request things. If I'm not able to get down here, I can just send Phil a tweet and say, look, is there any chance of getting an extra copy of The Times in because I missed it this week? Things of that nature really make a huge difference I think and of course it's really at no cost and I think that's the real real bonus actually um, because it's not as if you're having to outlay big sums of money I mean all you have to have is a computer and access to the internet and there you go. In this film we've explored your customers who they are and who they could be how they view you and your shop what they want and how to keep them happy and informed. In our next film we look at how to get the look and feel of your store right Taking you on a journey through making first impressions count, signage and in-store theatre, through to investment and whether being part of a symbol group could be good for you. 
For more details on the Store is the Core programme, visit storeisthecore.org.uk. 